Hello folks and welcome back to my channel, the Scottish Model Railway Guy. Now, today is part two of the, the Zebra Crossing. The train's just passing right now as it comes into the station. Over in the distance, what is the plan? Now, hang on a second and I'll show you. So if you looked at part one, which is coming up here, you'll understand that I was prepping these wee guys for I'm just going to bring that into focus I was prepping these wee guys for that zebra crossing over there so it's going to be a fairly straightforward video today today I'm going to be basically drilling a hole and you can see this stop piece so I've decided that's going to be the height of it and that was kind of based on holding it against a wee guy um, and it sort of seemed the right height now what have I done with this? You can see just as in the first video, red wire to positive, which is over here. Black wire over the other side to negative, and like I explained before on this power distribution unit, negative running all the way down that side, positive all the way down that side. We've got our voltage DC to DC voltage regulator there. It's a vibe to fall. And it's adjustable with this tiny wee screw here so we've got 16 volts coming in there from the Hornby controller and I've regulated it to 3 volts coming out these are 3 volt lights as are the other lights that I send out to the other part of the layout which I shall go up and show you I switched the one just now so yeah that is the target for today to get the zebra crossing over to the left hand side there with lights on it and I think once it's done it's going to look pretty cool but we shall see if you hang on we'll go to the next step here we go so before we go any further how did how am I going to extend this all the way out to there and it's I just want to explain this before we go any further just so you're getting it in case you've never done this type of thing before so you can see I've took a pink wire for positive and a grey wire for negative it doesn't really mean anything it's just the wire I've got right but these are Wago connectors I'm not sure if you can get that in focus it says Wago 221 on it now this isn't like terminal block it's something completely different what it is is it's a common, it's just a joining piece. So if you want another piece of wire to come off it, this is pink for positive. So you stick it in there, flick it down, and it should tighten in straight away. And then the grey was a negative. So I'll flick that down, and make sure that it's metal to metal inside there. I've not caught the bootlace ferrule. In theory, when I switch this on, which is now, it should start blinking, which it is, but I'm not sure you can see it, so I'm going to switch off the main light, and then you can see that beginning to flash, and then I'm going to switch off this light, so you can definitely see it. So I just wanted to explain that, that it's coming out of there, and then I'm extending the wire quite significantly to take it over there through these. So yeah, I want to actually fit it to the layout now. And here we are at the layout. So the general plan is, first of all, to move the train because I don't want to be doing anything with the train nearby. There's going to be a little bit of dust created, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Other than that, there's not an awful lot it's going to interfere with anything now. If you've never seen this zebra crossing done, then it would be good if you popped to see this video here and you can see how I put that together. It didn't take too long, it's actually done with stickers and then some dry brushing. But however, the objective today is to get these little fellows onto here, roughly. Now I did a little bit of research and it turns out that they go to the right hand side 
of a zebra crossing so it will be there and there and I'm going to pick away these stickers drill a hole down through with my battery drill um, which is right here and then once I've drilled the hole through it I'm going to put the lights down through and then connect them up to those Wago connectors I'll then do some cable tidying later on um, off camera because that would just shake everything about and it's pretty tight in here so yeah the best way to do this I find is to go to hyperlapse and then you can see it happening really really quickly probably the final thing I want to say is when you look at these wee chaps you can see this little piece here it slides up and down you can pick the height that you want it to go to but it also gives you enough to put down and stop it falling over so the drill has to be bigger than that hole but smaller than this bit here otherwise that will fall through so I'll need to double check that before I go anywhere the other thing is that once you get it to the height you want it little dab of super glue and that will hold it there forever so make sure it's at the height that you want it before you do it but anyway the first thing we're going to be doing is jump into hyperlapse and you can see the process happening really quite quickly so before we do that you've came this far in the video why not subscribe you're here already you've watched four or five minutes of this you must be enjoying it and i appreciate you joining me so please do consider subscribing to my subscribers thank you for coming back i appreciate it always so here we go to hyperlapse thank you And here we have it, it was as simple as that. It really isn't a massive deal, you just need some little skills to do it. Now, the reason I haven't put the second one in yet is because when I built this layout, I hadn't planned anything really, if I'm being honest, but uh, I need to take quite a precise measurement because I might drill into wood there. So I need to miss something underneath, so I need to go and measure with a steel rule and then check and then I'll drill through the other thing I need to do is the Wago connectors are only too wide so you've got your incoming 3 volts and then if you remember I took one out whereas over at that Wago connector I can actually take two out if I've got one that's three wide which you can buy so yeah that is it and that is how it looks and I'm just going to pan and I'm minute to a couple of different views so you can see that and just sort of run the trains past it you've noticed I've darkened the light that's very deliberate it's because it's quite bright when I've got the big light up the top on um, so it's more to sort of showcase what you can see there and I think that looks fantastic and I just want to say thank you to the people that suggested it to me it was uh, Dillington Model Railway who um, suggested it initially and I think they've got something very, very similar on their layout. So thank you for that. Um, you should nip over to the Darlington channel. It's fantastic, actually. They do some stop motion stuff that I have no clue how to do. But you sort of see everything moving about. But anyway, thank you for coming. Um, like I said before, if you're a current subscriber, much appreciated. Absolutely love the comments that you put in the channel. If you've never been here before, please do consider subscribing. I've got quite a number of subscribers now so lots of people coming back and getting involved in the channel and that's exactly what I want so we can all learn from each other so thank you and see you again